Okay. Sorry for the. I had to erase the first part of that message that I was trying to reiterate and get into because the internet had some interference, but I still believe it was Satan who don't want to see this word of God get out before the masses. So I'm coming live directly from the studios here at Restoring Unified Radio Ministries. I'm Pastor Alan Johnson. I'm going to teach on how do you know whether your dreams or visions are coming from God or not? How do you know whether your dreams or visions are coming from God or not? We're going to first of all talk about the common green dreams and the common heavenly visions that are normally in the Bible because we have to give you some type of prerequisite or foundation of the word of God in this. But before this, we're going to pray again. Spirit of the living God, I command that you take total control of this message right now in the name of Jesus. Take total control of the airwaves. Let everything be done in decency and order. I speak order right now. I take my authority as a saint over these lines that they would not go out again and that the word of God will go across with power. Father God, I ask you to touch the hearts of the masses, that they get something out of it, that they would be able to see Jesus in this. It's not about me. It's not about, it's about the Holy Ghost. It's about Jesus. It's about God. It's about the Godhead bodily. Use your vessel, Lord God. Take control of my heart. Take control of my mind, my emotions, my tongue, my feelings. And Father God, let it be reiterated through the Holy Spirit to touch the masses. Father God, let the passion of Jesus Christ is in me. The zeal of Jesus Christ. Let them understand that this is serious times. And we must know what these dreams and visions are all about. Father God, I thank you for allowing me to represent you in speaking your word. And Father God, you get all the honor. You get all the glory. You get all the praise. Take control. Let my speech be with grace, seasoned with salt, that they should hear. Give me the tongue of the learned, that I should know how to speak a word to the weary in the season. And wake my ear up morning by morning to hear as the ear of the learned. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. What is the purpose? of vision and dreams. Let's talk about it. Let's get down to the nitty gritty. How can you tell if your vision and dream is from God? Let's talk about the common dreams. Let's talk about Acts chapter 2, first of all. Acts chapter 2. Look at verse 17. And this is Peter on the day of Pentecost. And he's quoting the scriptures from the Old Testament, which is in Joel 2. 28. So we're going to start with Acts 2.17, which is the end result of the prerequisite that was in Joel 2.28. What did Jesus come to earth to do? Fulfill the law and the prophets. So this is an example of Jesus' fulfillment of the law and prophets because it's being brought over to the New Testament. Here we have Peter on the day of Pentecost speaking with Joel spoke 800 years ago when the Holy Spirit wasn't even poured out. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? It made a came upon certain men in the Old Testament, but the Spirit could not be in them. The reason why is because there was no mediator between God and man. You already know who that man is. It's the last Adam, Christ Jesus. So when Jesus saw them in John 20, before he rose up, before he talked about the remitting of sins and the keeping of sins and the taking away of sins, remember? And he, he breathed on them the Holy Ghost before he went up and he told them to tarry in Jerusalem, it was 120 of them, and they went up in the upper room. I don't know where the upper room was. 
You think about the upper the traditional churches. But they went up there and the Holy Ghost started speaking in diverse kinds of tongues on the day of Pentecost because there was many devout Jews from every nation under the sun that was there and they all spoke different languages. But they heard these Galileans, the people that were from the ghetto of Jerusalem, speaking in tongues and speaking wonderful works of God in their languages. And then Peter stood up because it was about nine o'clock in the morning they thought these jokers was drunk. But this is what happened. Peter just jumped up and started quoting Joel 2.28. Jesus coming to fulfill the law and the prophets and bringing it to the New Testament. It says, in this last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all mankind, upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Now check this out in the next, this is the key. Your old men or your young men shall see visions, spiritual visions. Your old men shall have spiritual dreams. Stop right there. God is pouring out his spirit in the last days on young men and old men. Now, to me, I'm young at heart. I'm 63. I get visions, but most of the time, I dream dreams. So in this envision, God is giving me dreams. Dreams set forth, and he's giving it to me, vivid dreams, showing me the future of my life. But there's nothing like having a young man coming alongside of you that has vision. Want to know why? Because the younger submits to the elder. Galatians chapter 4 verse 1 and 2 says that they must be under governors and tutors until the appointed time. So, the young is being tutored by the elder. The elder has the wisdom of God, and God, through his Holy Spirit, will give us elderly people that need to be respected, and we're not respected in the last days, because these young is trying to go on with their vision, and don't think that an older man or mentor is necessary. And this is how you're missing it in ministry. How do you know where your dreams and visions is coming from God? First of all, youngins, you have to have a mentor. You have to have somebody elder that's seasoned, that knows the word of God, that can impart wisdom. You have to have somebody interceding on behalf of you and monitoring you in what you do. You can't just jump out there with your vision and run with it. The Bible says to write the vision plain in Habakkuk. Then it said, sit and wait that you will be approved first, reproved First, that means God has to deal with you. You have to go through some processing and get some type of maturity in the things of God, not only in the word, but by his spirit. If you don't get it and you jump out ahead, guess what? Shipwreck. There's a scripture in Romans, there's a scripture in Romans 10 that says this, and I'm going to kind of quote it. It says, zeal without knowledge and wisdom can be dangerous to your health. Write it down. Zeal, because you can love God with all your heart. You can, oh God, I'm going to do this. But have you sat under governors and tutors? Have you sat under the old men of old that been where you're going? Have you 
stood long enough to respect your father. Because most of you youngest is in rebellion right now. And you're jumping out there. I'm a God. I'm a God. No, you're not. Sit down. I'm talking about dreams and visions. You have to have order in this. You can't jump ahead with your vision. The old man had the vision before you. Now he's old enough to set you up. And when God imparts dreams, he can give you his dreams and you can turn it into a vision and you can go out and implement it for the glory of God because you had mentorship that was above you, that was guiding you and leading you so you would not shit right. Then some of you wonder why your ministry is not working. Because you jumped ahead of God. It's all good. You're not dead. You can start all over again. You can start from the bottom and ground up and learn. It's okay to mess up. You're not going to know where you're going until you mess up. Unless you had the zeal of God to get up and do the work of God. I'll give that to you. But you need the old men there to dream dreams. You need the old men to impart. Like Elijah did Elisha. Like Moses did Joshua. Huh? Like Eli did Samuel. Like Samuel did David. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's going to be an impartation. This is what the scriptures say. This is why it had to mention the young men first. Because the young men are strong enough. And they still have their life to live ahead of them. The old men are soon to die. But they may live a longer life. To watch you work out. The vision that God gave you. I have a spiritual son. And Ken, he's online right now. His name is Nelson. Nelson may have made some mistakes in his life. But one thing I admire about Nelson, he's humble. He listens to God. Sometimes he, because he's young. And then there's sometimes certain things that I learned from my experience that I might have dreamt the dream, dream and I can impart knowledge and wisdom that will help Nelson hear from God. Just like Eli did Samuel. Remember? Samuel was asleep. And all of a sudden, a voice said, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel woke up, Eli, here am I, master. Here am I, master, Eli. He said, it wasn't me. Go back to sleep. And Samuel went back to sleep. And then the voice said, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel snapped up. And then he said, Master Eli, do you want me? And then the old man realized that God was speaking to Samuel. And what Eli did was give Samuel instructions. He says, next time he says that voice, Samuel, Samuel. He says, yo, man. Go ahead and say, I'm listening, Lord. Tell me what I need to know. And God came to Samuel in vision, but he heard the voice. And he told Samuel what was going to happen with Eli's future and what was going to happen with his future. And basically, Sam, Samuel went back and told Eli what the Lord told him. Eli didn't fare well with God because he was walking in error. He was an old man with some wisdom and some insight. But he got to the point where he got lazy and lacks of daisies in his walk with God and didn't cross his T's and dot his eyes. So the mantle was passed on from Eli in the priesthood onto young Samuel, who was had an ear to hear what the Spirit was saying. Do you understand what I'm saying? You know why I'm stuck on the scripture? Because the Holy Spirit works in many ways. He works through dreams and visions. And sometimes Satan works through dreams and visions. Do you know the difference? Can you tell 
whether the dream is from God or whether it's from Satan. Can you tell whether that vision is from God and from Satan? Let me finish this up. It says, even on my bond servant, both men and women, I will in those days pour out my spirit and they shall prophesy. And I will bring wonders in the sky above and signs attesting miracles on the earth below and blood, fire, smoke and vapor and the sun shall turn into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and glorious day that the Lord comes and it shall be that everyone that calls on the name of the Lord, if they're invoking, if they're enduring, if they're worshiping God in spirit and in truth, they shall be saved and rescued spiritually. Because the rest of your life, you're going to be living by this spirit man. You're going to have a new glorified body in glory. But your spirit man is going to be radiant from the inside out. Now, the young men are going to see the visions. They're going to go into things of God, but they must have mentors. They must have tutors. They must have people leading them. The old men will dream dreams, fulfilling what they had not finished when they were young and had vision. I was young and had vision, and only few things came into fruition. Now, I can take of my vision from my dreams that God has still given me and pour it into Nelson. 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 There may be other sons out there that I would point to, but many are not ready. God says, tutors and governors be under them to the appointed time that God would permit them to leave. What's happening in the world today, the young man is leaving the authority of God before his time. Reason is because some of us old heads have become fools. We stop dreaming. We It's all about the almighty dollar now. So we pour the wrong gospel into the youngin, and we send them forth to do the work of God. And it's a misfit. It's not of God. It's not going to stand. It's not going to rule. It's not going to rain. It might show up for a few hours, a few years. You might crack on a little something, something, but it ain't going nowhere. Because there was no true vision of God from the dream from the old man that he left on the new. The old man became rebellious against God too. This is why the spirit's not moving. This is why you see people taking shortcuts. This is why people going back to ancestral worship to witch doctors to get the potions, to get the magic, to get the, the mutiny and all that kind of crap. Ancestral worship, worship of demons to operate in the gifts and signs and wonders with power. The impartation of the spirit of the true spirit of God comes when you get on your knees and when you mean it with God and when you say create in me a clean heart oh God and renew a right spirit in me cast me not away from your presence take not your precious Holy Spirit he the Holy Spirit from me so I can fulfill your will I want to live like you want me to live. I want your mind. I want your tongue. I want your heart. I want your whole being. You have to mean business with this. And you can't move too fast. Because zeal without knowledge and wisdom is going to kill you. That's the problem with some. There's a scripture in Romans chapter 10 where it talks about putting zeal before knowledge and wisdom. Yeah, you can have zeal, but you need knowledge and wisdom. You need that spiritual father. You need that spiritual upbringing, that mentor that can pour into you based on experience. You can't jump ahead of God. And all I can do is sit back because I'm the old man that have vision. Get him, Nelson. Get him, Nelson. Get him, Nelson. Get him, Nelson. I'm poor. I'm not envious of the anointing on your life. I can't be. I'm your daddy.
I have to pour. I have to pour. Moses had to lay hands on Joshua. Huh? Everybody had a mentor in the Bible. With Paul, it was Priscilla and Aquila and Barnabas. With Barnabas, it was the apostles of Jesus Christ. Even though he was rich, he owned a lot of property. And he poured into the ministry and gave him a substance so people could have and was teaching them how to get theirs. Everybody was mentoring everybody. When you talk about dreams and visions, you have to relate to the mentor, the mentee, the mentor, and the whole mentorship system. When you're talking prophetically, because you got people jumping out. I talked to one brother, he was online trying to be Mr. Prophet so and so. And he wanted to join our dreams and interpretation. So I seen his name up in lights, prophet so-and-so with a suit on. He was laying hands on the sick. And the Holy Spirit said, I want you to question him. I want you to try the spirit by the spirit. I said, okay, Holy Spirit, I'll do that. And I told Brother Nelson what I told my son what I did. And I questioned him. I gave him four questions. My wife was standing right there. I said, uh, what is your vision, son? First day he told me. Well, my vision is to save the souls for Jesus Christ. Okay, but well, that's every Christian's vision. That's what God appointed us to do. He said, do the work of an evangelist. That, that, that's nothing new. I mean, uh, what's your niche, son? What did God really show you according to scripture? Did you get before the throne of God and he specifically gave you scripture and verse? He couldn't give me no scripture and verse. I said, son, Number two, who is your mentor? Who tutored you in the things of God? Do, and number three, do you have a foundation? He looked at me. He couldn't answer those questions. I said, no, no, sir. Because you're supposed to set up under tutors and governors to the appointed time. And then God will release you and you will have the blessings from the man of God and the mentor of God that released you. Who is that person? Couldn't answer. His mouth was wide open. I said, son, tell me about salvation. Couldn't tell me. Well, it's about souls getting saved. I said, no. Tell me what salvation is to you. And I didn't want to ask go any further and go into sanctification because I knew that heck he wouldn't know what that's all about. I knew from that one question, if you can't tell me about salvation, you can't tell me about the blood, you can't tell me about redemption, you can't tell me about sanctification, you can't tell me what Christ done for you. You just a lone ranger out there trying to be a prophet. Yeah, you might be one, but where's your spiritual daddy? Where's your spiritual mama? What did they impart in you? What did they teach you? We should be speaking the same thing, son. Then he wanted to show me all these buildings that he was building for his orphanage and blah, 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 blah. That don't mean jack to me because you got brick and mortar. If you have church in your house, I would rather condone the ones that have church in their own home and they know who they are in Christ Jesus. They know where they're going. They know what their purpose is. They know what their vision is. And they got insight. I would take them on before I take the person on with the brick and mortar if they don't have no vision. Because the Bible says, without a vision, my people will perish. And without knowledge, you can perish. And so if I'm giving you the knowledge of the word of God and you're not wanting to receive what I'm speaking and I'm speaking from the book, huh? Then you're going to reject it and you're still going to perish. So you're wasting my time. You just want to come on our line, on our dream and interpretation line to show out. We don't need show out. We have enough show outs on Facebook. 
We have enough show outs on social media. We have enough people ranking out men and women of God on Facebook. We're tired of that. We want an importation of the power of God. We want to see the manifestations of the sons and daughters of God to go forth. And this is what we need. And it's going to come. Part of it's going to come through dreams and it's going to come through visions. And you need to understand what this is all about. Do you understand what I'm saying? So when Peter reiterated that he's going to, that God's going to pour out his spirit, part of the spirit pouring out, pouring was through his sons, the young sons and the fathers. Remember in, in Malachi, at the end of the chapter, it says that God's going to turn the hearts of the father back to the children and the hearts of the children back to the father. There's going to be a connect back together because God's going to move on the young and to move in the anointing and the elder, the father, going to back it up with the dreams and the son's going to walk forward with the vision. And it's going to be implemented. And it's going to be implemented in this time, the last days. This is what Peter is saying. I want you to get this in your spirit. Understand that dreams and visions is not only for young men and, 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 and older men. It's for older women and younger women. In the book of Genesis... God said he created man, male, and female. Then he created them as one with God together. The woman did not become the help me until sin. Okay? She was always the help me. But she became a slave of a man after sin came into the likeness. Do you understand what I'm saying? So basically, they're on the same even kill in the gospel. But women, the order of God, you have to be up under a tutor of a man for a season to be released. That's God's order. That's God's order. That's God's order. Second, First Corinthians chapter 11. Read it. Read it about the covering. And the hair later on becoming the woman's covering, but she had to be faithful under a man. The mentorship of a man for a season before she's released. That is God's order. It's in the scriptures. Read it. You can't be out there and be the Lone Ranger. Dreams and visions only come into fruition when you do things orderly according to the way God wants things to be. Hey, Apostle Georgia, how you doing? Blessings, sister. Blessings, my son, Nelson. Blessings, my wife, Lisa. Listen to me, listen to me, listen to me very clear. When you talk in visions and dreams, and when you want to know whether they're from God, first of all, you got to understand God's order. That's number one. God's order. Not Alan's order. Not your order. This may be why the door was closed in a lot of areas, because you were going about it without getting consultant from the word of God. I've messed up here a lot of times. Well, I tried to jump out of the head of God when I was much younger because I didn't understand the full context of what it was to be under tutors and mentors. I didn't understand it. And then I sat up under a few men of God that actually had the real true visions and dreams from God, and they were seeing things. I sat up under a mother who's now 87 years old. And her mother is 105 in South Carolina. But they have the true wisdom. They would have dreams and interpret. They can be able to interpret dreams. Nelson, my son, right there in Kenya, has the gift of interpreting dreams. I have somewhat of the gift of interpreting dreams. I don't want to brag about it because I hate interpreting dreams. Because usually I'm that prophet of doom or something where I'm coming to bring warning and people are not wanting to hear what I got to say and I tend to scare them away. But all I'm doing is giving them what the Holy Spirit is giving me. See, there's this prophet in Nigeria and I pick up, you're going to see him on my Facebook page. His name is Prophet Silas. 
And every time a person is doing wrong, Prophet Solace just pops up with his blue shirt on. You ever see him on it with a little white collar? I mean, I don't know if he washes. I, the, brother, the brother got it going on, though. And there was one scene in there when he was before the man of God at his church. And the man of God had introduced this man that was supposed to work on this man's church and build his building. He had the nerve to introduce this man to Prophet Silas. Oh, Prophet Silas, one of them type of prophets, boy. He'll find you out. And the, and the man of God, he shook hands with him. He says, can you pray with him in agreement for this project to go forth in the church? <laughs> and check this. He, he shook, he held his hand. He began to pray, spirit of the living God. And all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit said, wait, whoa, 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 wait, wait, wait. This man is fake. And he revealed to Prophet Silas everything that he was getting ready to do to that man of God. Everything. He said, this man came in here, he's a fake. He he said he's going to put 500,000 lira. This man don't even have 12,000 lira in his bank account. He came to fraud you. He came to take advantage of one of the sisters in your church. He came to fraud you, and he wasn't even going to complete the work. Caught the man before he even started the project. If the man of God can learn to listen to God's prophets when he talks in visions and dreams. See, Silas had a vision right there. Boom. And it came on him. And the man of God was exposed for who he was. I had the same situation happen to me. There was a church in Mississippi. We talked about it last night. Some of you weren't there. But I'm going to bring it back up again. It was a young man of God. And this church had just recently went through a church split. I didn't know this man from the hell of beans. But the spirit of the living God says, I want you to go to that church. I said, why do you want me to go to that church? He said, never mind, just go to that church. I'll tell you later. So as I sat in the congregation, the Holy Spirit started speaking to me. And he told me that this church just went through a church split. And in my mind, I'm saying, Holy Spirit, well, why? He said, well, the pastor was in infidelity and the people voted him out. And God sent forth this man of God who's younger, who's vibrant, who see, who has a vision. I said, so you want me to help him with his vision? He says, no, I don't want you to help him with the vision. I want you to tell him something, but not right yet. And he says, well, what do you want me to tell him? He said, see that old lady over there? I said, yes, sir. He said, she's from the old church. I said, yes, sir. He says, that lady's been opposing that young man of God. She's been giving him a hard time. And he can't go forth and implement ministry because she's running her mouth. Because she's putting her mouth on the man of God. Because she's talking to him. Because she's putting words in his mouth saying he's never going to make it in the community. And blah, 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 and things of that nature. But yet she's an old deaconess in the church. And he can't move her because she's under a Baptist church regime. This man came to bring the Holy Spirit and power into this Baptist church and shine a light there. But the Holy Spirit was revealing this to me. He said, see that old man over there? He's partaking in with that lady against him. And they're giving this young man a hard time. I said, so what do you want me to do, Lord? He says, just wait one tick. The Lord just told me to wait one tick. So I'm in the service. We're having a good time. The Lord didn't say nothing. I come back the next service. The Lord told me to come back. He said, now this service at the end of the service, that man of God is going to call you into his office. I said, what for? He says, you'll see. So at the end of the second Sunday, the first Sunday, nothing happened. The second Sunday I went back, I was called in his office. We started talking. All right? So at that time, I had that vision what God was revealing to me, speaking to me through the word of knowledge and showing me certain people. Do you understand? I envisioned them, what they were doing in the dark to the man of God. Then at the same time, God was expounding on me a word of knowledge that I needed to have. Then he wanted me to go to the office and I didn't know when I went and spoke with the man of God. We started speaking for a couple of hours and the Holy Spirit says, now it's time to tell him. Tell him what, Lord? Tell him about what I told you. I'll give you the words to say. So I said, man of God, you just went through a church split, didn't you? He said, well, how do you know, man of God? I said, well, the Holy Spirit showed me that. And he showed me there's two people in this church that are opposing you. It's a man and it's a woman. 
And then God told me to tell him that he was going to move these people out of the way. I said, so you can go forth and do your ministry. I said, for God has called you. And he comes the word of wisdom coming out of my mouth. The word of wisdom. I spoke the word of knowledge. I told him what was going on. Then I spoke a word of wisdom because that's relating to the future. And with the word of wisdom is instruction from God. So when I spoke the instruction, you are to go in the community and you're going to filtrate this community and you're going to be great and do great and mighty things in this community for God, blah, blah, blah. Uh huh. So he condoned me. We shook hands. I left. I thought I was going to come back the following Sunday. The Lord made it that I couldn't come back. I was over the road driving truck for about, eh, about three or four weeks. Let me tell you something. Came back. After three or four weeks, God told me, now I want you to go back to that church. Lo and behold, listen to this, listen to this, Georgia. Listen to this, Georgia. This is in Mississippi. Listen to this, brother, brother Nelson. God is my witness. I walked up in the church. They were having a funeral on a Sunday morning. I walked in the church. I went up to the casket. I went up to the casket. And it was the same woman that the Holy Spirit showed me that was opposing that man of God. It was in that coffin they were having her funeral. Mark my word. I know what I'm talking about. That blew me away. I said, well, God, in my mind, I said, God, you told me you were just going to move my way. You didn't say you were going to kill him. So right at the end of the service, I, I didn't see the old man around the church. It was a bunch of new members there. They was coming in every Sunday. He was getting new people coming in, new, new, new people that were being converted over to the things of God. And I went to the office, and he says, I said, what happened, man of God? He said, man, I tell you, I don't know. I said, but you spoke it. He said that God was going to, but I didn't expect God to kill him, man of God. I didn't think this. I didn't know. He said, where were you? I said, well, God kept me away until this Sunday. He wouldn't let me come back. I said, well, what's happened to the older guy that was opposing you? He said, he's home and he has full-blown cancer. I said, what? That's how I knew God was God. <laughs> That's how I knew God was God. I said, whoa. Whoa. Through vision, he showed me and he gave me and he told me to, what to tell the man of God. And he told me to encourage him that these people will be moved out of the way. I didn't know this man from the hill of beans. God has a way of ministering. Do what? Dreams and visions. I'm giving you some examples. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Hold on a sec. We're, I think we're going to have three or four parts of this thing. Because this thing is going to get juicy as we go along. Because not only am I going to expound on the word of God. Mm -hmm. I'm going to expound on experiences that have happened in my life and experience that happened to my forefathers and my foremothers' lives. I'm going to share some stuff and it's going to be words of wisdom basically not only from my life but from my spiritual father and my spiritual mother's life that I was right there abundant under the tutelage and I witnessed it myself. This is going to blow your mind and most of it is founded on the word of God. You can't take away from it. You can't add to it, baby. It is what it is. Now, check this out. Second Corinthians, not First Corinthians. Second Corinthians, look at chapter 12. Let me get there. I'm sitting here running my mouth. Here we go. Second Corinthians, chapter 12. Let's start with verse 1. Okay. Now, this is Paul. I, I want you to, 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 to not jump to conclusions. I know you know what the scripture probably say. But there's something, some insight and some input I want you to see in the scripture. This is Paul talking to the church. It is necessary to brag or to boast. Though nothing is to be gained by it. But I will go into visions and revelations of the Lord. What is he talking about? Dreams and visions and revelation. Listen to this. He says, 
I don't need to brag. I, I, I don't have to brag. But I do receive revelation, dreams, and visions from God. This is what Paul is telling. I don't want to brag. Just like I, I was telling you my experience with that man of God. I'm not bragging. I'm trying to show you how God works. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago, right, but Paul's actually talking about himself. Check this out. Whether in the body, I do not know. Or out of the body, I don't know. So either, number one, you're going to have an out-of-body experience as far as visions where God's going to take you up. Or you're going to have an in-the-body experience where God translates you and takes you up. But you're not here. You're someplace else. Don't tell me it's not true. Remember the Ethiopian and Enoch? Remember, remember Peter coming along the chariot? And he was translated. It was Philip. It was Philip. And Philip was taken some, somewhere, someplace else in Gaza. And you could be taken not only out of your body, but your body can be taken through vision and be translated someplace else. Keep on walking with God. You're going to be able to see that. Keep on having relationships with God. You're going to be able to see that. And people are going, oh, she's a witch in the wall. Like, uh -uh. She did that by the power and inspiration of God. See, the devil tries to copy God. Those gifts were first given through the Holy Spirit to God. Because if it didn't happen, it wouldn't happen in Philip's life. And when it happened in Philip's life, when he went to the Ethiopian Enoch, and he translated what Isaiah 53 meant, that Jesus came to be slaughtered and to be resurrected, to die and to be buried and resurrected for our sins. And right then and there, the Ethiopian Enoch was baptized, boom, by Philip in the river. And Philip all of a sudden disappeared. Do you believe in signs and wonders? Do you believe in dreams and visions? It's in the Bible. It can happen. The only reason why it's not happening to you is because you're too much in the flesh. If you would get to God and have a relationship and walk in the spirit. See, there's different levels. There's different levels of glory with God and how he uses us. And some people are down here where they don't understand the fullness because they have to develop and grow in the things of God to get there. So when when Paul is talking about whether he was in the body, out of the body, Paul had <laughs> Paul was doing some serious praying. He probably was at this level in the glory of God, but he didn't want to brag about it. But he came to reiterate with you that you could be in the body or out of the body. It don't matter. I want you to underline those scriptures. Now check this. But such a man was caught up into what? The third heaven. The highest heaven. Heaven days. You want some reference to it? Go to Luke 23, 43. Mark it down. Luke 23, 43. And check this. Verse 3. I know that such a man, whether again, in the body or out of the body. I do not know. Only God knows. Was caught up into paradise and heard Inexpressible words which man is not permitted to speak. Words too sacred to tell. Remember Jesus when he was on the cross? Remember the two thieves that was one was on the right and one was on the left representing the sheep on one side and the goat on the other side and the man on the goat side was complaining about his life and he shouldn't be there and you ain't Jesus and putting Jesus down but the other man says Lord I know who you are he says please have mercy on me please I know I've done wrong I know I I I deserve to die. I deserve not to, to not to live. And Jesus turned around to him. He says, today, young man, because you forgave yourself of your sins, you, you came to me and asked me to help you. And you wanted me. Today, you will be with me in paradise. This is where Jesus was at in paradise, sitting at the right hand 
of the Father. This was the third heaven. This was paradise. The, be the, the thief is right there at the throne worshiping God. Jesus said, I promise you, today you will be with me. I guarantee you, when you go up to heaven today, you're going to see that thief right there next to Jesus. Because what Jesus said, I promised you, you're going to be in the third heaven with me. When you call up to the third heaven, there's something about your relationship with Christ. When you call up to the third heaven, and you hear things, and you see things, like Ezekiel looking at that creature with all of my eyes. I would freak out if I was to see all that. <laughs> I'm serious. To see all those weird looking animals up there with five or six wings. We never seen nothing like that here on earth. But this is stuff in the spirit realm that we don't understand. So I'm telling you, when you get in God, you're going to see things that's going to blow your mind. When I got delivered from the demon of sexual immorality, when I got delivered from the demon of anger, and I used to go off on people, the Holy Spirit showed me in the vision what these spirits looked like. He said, I said, and there was a piece of brown blob with eyes in it, with a big penis, looking at me. Blinking his eyes. But he was outside of me. I said, Holy Spirit, what's that? He said, that's the spirit of sexual immorality that was cast out of you. I said, I freaked out. I said, in the name of Jesus, get out of here. That thing took off. Then another day, there was a green creature had legs like a frog with a long tail, a big penis in between his legs, and he had a face it was shaped like a frog, but it had a face like a dragon. And every time it spoke, fire would come out of his mouth. And it was green and slimy and nasty. And I was preaching on Facebook at that time. I think it was a couple of years ago. My wife was teaching the word right next to me. I freaked out and saw it right in the middle of my sermon. And I said, God, what's that? He said, that's the spirit of anger and resentment and unforgiveness that was in you. I said, ah, I said, you better get out of my house. And I see that thing hopping like a frog and went out through the, through the walls, through the neighbor's yard. I saw it. See, I wasn't ever caught up in the third heaven. But God allowed me to see certain things in the spirit. And it blew my mind. Sometimes I would see shadows or something. And I said, I know that. And I and I feel something funny in my spirit. I know it's safe. But sometimes I feel like I see this. There's a light. There's a glow in the room. There's an ominous. And it's smooth. You know, I know it's the angels and the spirit of God checking me out. And because I feel an insurance. But, but I know when that enemy comes in because it's like a. A dark shadow. And I would just glimpse and turn around and see it. How many of y'all saw that in your walk with God? See, when you start getting into God and start getting into the love of God, he, the Bible says he's going to show you higher heights, deeper depths, what's in, what's out, what's about God. Because you're translating your life to love like God says love. And the more you get closer to the God, the more the gifts are going to be prevalent and God's going to open your eyes and allow you to see. But if you continue on murmuring, complaining, hating on folk, you ain't going to see nothing. Now you might see, God might take you down to hell and give you a one and shake you. We don't know whether it's out of your body. We don't know whether it's in your body, like Paul's saying here. So not only can you be called up to the third heaven, but you could be taken to the depths of hell, whether out of the body or whether in the body. I'm talking vision. I'm talking dreams. You don't know. But I heard, verse 4, inexpressible words which man is not permitted to speak. Words, this is the, this, this, the, the uh, amplified version. It says words too sacred to talk about. Can't tell you. Can't tell you. It says in verse 5, on behalf of such a man and his experiences with God, 
I will brag about them. But in my behalf, I will not brag or boast except it be in regard to my weakness. Understand this, men and women of God. Don't brag about your invitations with God. Don't brag and boast because you can see in the spirit realm. Brag and boast that you got delivered from that spirit. That's why I had to bring up the two spirits that was bombarding me most of my life. And I had to fight the good fight of faith to get rid of it. I would rather boast of me being delivered from that. But I'm trying to show you about dreams and visions. You got to line yourself up in the love of God. You got to line yourself up into doing right before God and putting even your enemy before God. Not cursing them like David did. Get him, God. Get him, God. Get him with a knife and a switchblade. No, not that. God love him. Bless them. Bless them that despite you using and persecute you and curse you. You got to change to that mindset to get to this point. And you got to continue to practice it as the trials come, as the error comes, as the hardship come. You have to continue to walk in love, even through it, because that's your test right there. And the moment you pass test, he's taking you from glory to glory to glory. And all of a sudden, you're going to start seeing things. The Bible says in Jeremiah 33, 3, call upon me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things in the spirit realm that you know nothing about. This is the God that we serve. So don't be foolish to brag about yourself when you come to this, because you got to come to some type of maturity. But the reason why I got to teach on this level, because there are some people out there that are operating in dreams and visions, and they may not understand. But if I share with you what I've been through, maybe we can meet eye to eye and connect, and we can minister and more effectively on your behalf so you'll know what you're going through. Do you get what I'm saying? Now. Paul saw the heavenly vision. Peter saw men and women getting the dream and the vision. Check this out. Look at Job chapter 33. And I'm going to cut this short. It's going to be a part two. Do you hear me now? Okay. You got the sound back? I'm sorry. Okay. 
Now, Job 33, you got the sound back, uh, Apostle? Okay. Let me know. Yeah, because I pressed the button by mistake. Yeah, can you hear me now? Just let me know, yes or no. Let me know, yes or no. Somebody let me know, yes or no. Do you hear me now? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Georgia. Now, in Job chapter 33, Job had dreams and visions of the Lord. Let's look at verse 10, verse 14. It says that God speaks once, underline it. And God speaks even twice, underline that. Yet no one pays attention or notices it. Underline that whole verse. In a dream, a vision of the night, one may hear God's voice. When deep sleep falls upon men, when slumbering upon the bed, listen to this in verse 16, he opens up the ears of men and seals their instructions. In dreams and visions, he's giving you a sign about what's going ready to happen in your life. He's gearing you and he's showing you because during the day you had too much going on that you couldn't focus on God. So the only way that God can come to you is through vision when you're sleeping in the night or when you're getting quiet. This is why I always tell you people when you intercede, always get off in a place by yourself. God says when you go to them in secret, he'll show you things in secret and reward you openly. You got to make it a lifestyle where you got to get by yourself, especially when you are in dreams and visions. Understand that you it's hard for you. To get in dreams and visions when you got too much stuff going on. Sometimes it can be dreams of confusion and the dreams can intercept God's dreams because it's Satan intervening. Mark my word. I'm going to show you something. Check this out. Then he opens the ears of men and seals their instructions. Check this out. That he may turn aside from his conduct. That he may stop sinning. That he may stop going in the wrong direction. I gave him a dream to stop him in his tracks. To keep him from walking in pride. I sent him a dream. Didn't he send Nebuchadnezzar a dream? Remember Daniel warned him about the tree being cut down? And you keep bragging and boasting. The kingdom was going to be taken away from you. And you was going to be like a beast in the field. Remember Daniel gave him that warning? And Nebuchadnezzar took heed to the warning. But it went a year, and never Nebuchadnezzar forgot. Remember what Daniel warned him about a year ago. You can read it in Daniel. And what happened was, he got up and decided that I'm Nebuchadnezzar. I'm the best around. My nation of Babylon is the greatest that I built. Didn't want to give glory to God. Guess what happened? Started growing claws. Nose became like a beak, like an old bird. Started growing hair on his thing like a beast. And he wandered around reprobate to the core for seven years. Because he didn't take heed to the dream. He was warned. Daniel told him. He opened up the ears of instruction and told him if he would just humble himself before God, God would make his nation even greater. But a year later, Nebuchadnezzar forgot. He said to keep him from pride, verse 17, to turn man from his conduct and to keep man from pride. He holds, verse 18, he holds back his soul from going to hell, from going to the pit, from going into destruction, from going into Sheol, which is a temporary place in hell for you, before you get thrown in the lake of fire. And his life from passing over to Sheol, neither world, but the place of the dead. God was trying to save his life. 
Abraham Lincoln. And Nelson told me this one. This, I'm going to ride this one off my son. Abraham Lincoln, the 16th president of the United States that wanted to invoke stop slavery during the 1860s had a dream and vision of his death. He dreamt that he went to the theater and somebody shot him. And when he went back to the White House, they were having a funeral and he told the man, whose funeral is this? He says, the president just got killed. Now he's walking into his own funeral and the dream already gave Abraham a warning don't go to the theater. You know what Abraham Lincoln did? He went to the theater with his wife. And just like he dreamt, he got shot up. God gave him a warning for him not to go to the pit. But Abraham Lincoln didn't get it. He walked right into the death trap. Do you understand what I'm saying? He had a vision of his own death. About last year, year before last, I think, God had told me at that time to stop driving truck during COVID. Now, he has me back in the truck now, but there was a season and a time for it according to what he wanted me to do, according to the business. And during that time, I was rebellious. I wanted to do it my way. So my wife told me, baby, I don't think it's good for you to go back over the road now. COVID's out there, blah, blah, blah. Then here comes my baby daughter, Hannah. And you know, Hannah got them, Hannah and Tosh, both of them, they got that inner vision. If something, they get a dream or a vision or something, tell them something. Usually I try to listen to my babies because they keep daddy out of trouble. <laughs> you understand? And then all of a sudden, my daughter had a vision and a dream that I was in a truck accident. Then the night, two nights before I was to leave and go get the truck in Tennessee and get back over the road now, my warning was the truck broke down twice. I got into the shop. They sent me back to Havelock, North Carolina. And I was about to, as soon as the truck got fixed, I was about to jump back in that truck again. I wasn't trying to take heed to the warning, according to the scripture. Understand what I'm saying. And I had a dream that night because I was the lead Wednesday. They already had the bus ticket waiting for me to go back to Tennessee to get the truck. God, they, you can ask my broker. I'm with the same broker now. They, you can ask my broker. Tell, tell, mark my word. I had a dream that I died. And I turned around and told Brandy and Chase, I, I, I love them. I love your other life. They're in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. They're my broker. I said, I can't do this right now. Maybe I'll come back later. Maybe the Lord will move on me later, but I can't do this. I took heed and listened to the dream that God showed me and showed my babies. And that's why I'm still here. If I had not had taken heed to that dream, listen to what I'm saying, then I would have made a massacre of myself. Another situation. I was going to South Carolina. And, you know, it's way before I married my wife. I was young. I was stupid. I was out there. I had one foot in, one foot out. I wasn't serious about the things of God back then. I mean, even though I still knew what the word said and blah, 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 I did what I wanted to do. So, I mean, I drove around with my Honda Accord. I just came from Cali. I just got divorced from my, my first wife. And I thought I could just go ahead and run amok and maybe get me a little girly up in the hotel from old time's sake. But little did I know, AIDS had just came out and was running rapid in our community. It was killing people like this. And they had no cure for it. They had no medication for it during that time. And I had a dream that night that I was to meet some chick. But the Holy Spirit told me, stay away. And I didn't understand. I woke up. So that day, the next day, I did run into some chicks. I knew who they were. I'm not going to say no names. And little did I know, I'm talking to one and I'm setting up this little rendezvous to go to the hotel. You know how you fellas do when y'all try to get up in a female and y'all talking all that stuff. Yeah, baby, I'll be there. It was a setup. Let me tell you something. 
I left out of there, had a number, was getting ready to meet her at the hotel the next day. The Holy Spirit, my friend, the paraclete, my sidekick, my man, my, my brother, told me to go to a friend's house in a town called Coosahatchee, South Carolina, in Jasper County. Who I play football and ran track with. Old friend of mine. Not going to say no names. And when I went to his house, lo and behold, he was out mowing the lawn. Now, remember, I had the dream. The Holy Spirit told me not to. Now he's, the Holy Spirit's getting ready to tell me through this man why. So I walk up, right? What's up? We start talking. We start talking about old times. Yo, man. And all of a sudden, the conversation went to people that had AIDS in that community. And I listened to what he said. And he, he told me the people that died of AIDS, the people that got it now. And guess whose name was on the list that had the AIDS? The girl that I was going to meet the next day to have sex with. And if I did not listen to the Holy Spirit and go to Ronnie, my friend Ronnie's house, that's all I'm going to tell you, I would not have known that this girl had AIDS and right now I wouldn't be here talking to you. Listen to what I'm saying. This is wisdom talking. Man of God, that want to get in women's pants behind your wife's back, watch what you're doing. Because it may not fare well with you. I did not tell Ronnie I didn't know the, the female that he was talking about. The way he said, man, you can run a train between that woman's leg. She already put two guys in the grave. And she's still living with it. Do you think in a million years that I was going to go back and call that female, meet her at the hotel the next day? Believe me, I went to my sister's house in Beaufort, South Carolina, and I blocked the number. And that girl was calling me out there, yang yang, for two weeks. And I ignored her call. And I was set free. I'm here to tell you that dreams and visions can save your life. If you would just listen to the Holy Spirit and when God speaks, let me show you something. It says in verse 16, he comes in a dream in a vision of the night, verse 15, right? He said that one may hear God's voice. When deep sleeps fall upon men, when they slumber on their bed. Then he opens the ears of men and seal instructions. That he may turn man aside from what he's doing wrong. What was I doing? I was getting ready to get some booty. It was booty call for me. That's all I thought about. And to keep him from pride. Because it was pride. Because I was one foot, one foot out, one foot in with God. I wasn't serving God the right way. And I was single. And he holds back his soul from the pit. God sure enough saved me from the pit. When Ronnie came and told me about that female. And about the other people that had the stuff. And he saved me from destruction. And he saved my life from passing over the shield. And to neither the world, but the place of the dead. I'm not dead. I'm alive in Christ now. But if I had listened to the vision, to the dream, the word of knowledge that was given to the Holy Spirit, I would have missed God. Dreams. Let me tell you the difference between dreams and vision. And I'm going to take two steps and we get out of here and stay tuned for part two. This is the difference between dreams and visions. Dreams we receive when we are asleep. God speaks and reveals. The devil sneaks up and tries to imitate himself like he is God. And we can interpret that wrong through a dream. 
a vision is received in the mind when we're wide awake. We could just daydream and be caught up in a trance and see things in the spirit realm while we are awake or the Holy Spirit will come us and we'll be caught up. But we don't know where we are, but we can hear the Holy Spirit speaking to us, giving a sound instruction or interpretation. It can be used in interpretation of tongues. Did you know that vision can work in interpretation of tongues and prophesy? Why do you think it said back in, in, in Acts chapter 2, it says that in the last days, my sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall dream, uh, see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. Because you can flow in the gifts. Listen to me. Listen to me. And I've seen it. And it happened to me. Where well, you could be caught up in a vision. And you could be given a word of knowledge. To give out. To people. It's happened in some of my spiritual father's lives. Kenneth Hagen. Daddy Hagen. The late dad. Not his son. The late daddy Hagen senior. Had those type of encounters. I've had those type of encounters. Nelson had some of those encounters. George, you may have had some of the. I know my wife Lisa had. Well, you're caught up in a vision, and God will show you something on one side about an individual. There was times my wife showed me stuff, and I said, oh, hog mog, I ain't listening to you. And two weeks later, the sister that she prophesied told me she was up to no good. It was exactly like my wife told me. Do you understand what I'm saying? So visions of the mind, you could be wide awake and God can speak to you and God can reveal, but you also got to be careful of the adversary because if you're walking in sin, most of the time, 90% of the time, it's Satan operating through your vision and your dream. Every time you have a bad dream and you keep having bad dreams all the time, it means that you're not walking right with God. I want you to write it down. Every time you keep having bad dreams, especially with snakes in it, especially with stuff that's leading into death in it, or animals, wild animals attacking you, things of that nature. You probably heard Brother Nelson talk about it in his teaching. You probably heard Brother Kevin talk. I'm just giving you little, little bits and pieces. Every time you get this in visions and dreams, it's not from God. Dreams are only happening when you sleep. A vision is only happening. When you're awake. Do you get what I'm saying? How do you know whether the dreams are from God? How do you know whether the dreams are from Satan? I'm going to save some of that for part two. I've got to take two steps from here and get out of here. Stay tuned for part two. I'm going to cut it short right now. I'm coming back on the line in about another five minutes to come back with part two. On dreams and visions. Are they coming from God? Or are they coming from Satan? Check you. Bye.